let's do a quick review of what we have done so far so we have seen what is fem okay, so it is a numerical method which is used to solve pdes we know that this uh, fem does not uh, does not use pdes directly okay, or it does not use the strong forms but it uses something called weak forms and we also said it uses the energy form we have seen uh, how to start with a strong form and reach its corresponding weak form uh, we have also seen how a weak form is equivalent to a strong form okay. we have not worked with the energy form so far and that we will do later and some side preliminaries which we have learnt are dot product uh, L2 and H1 spaces okay. we have also seen what are the requirements on v of x or w of x and we have seen what are the requirements on u of x okay. and one very important lemma which we have learned was the fundamental lemma of calculus of variations Okay. which basically says uh, it's an integral a to b fx gx dx equal to zero implies that f of x is identically equal to zero if g of x is an arbitrary function and f of x is a given function Okay, now with this background, let us begin to see how we can directly solve the weak form. Okay. So directly solving the strong form, you already know, you have learned many methods of solving partial differential equations. Now let us learn a method which we call the Ritz method for directly solving the weak form. This is called the Ritz method. Now the idea behind Ritz method is similar to what you know that series solution of PDEs. Okay, where you assume uh, the function in terms of unknown coefficients and known functions as a series and then try to find the coefficients. The idea is the same. Okay, So what we have in terms of weak form is this. Now, notice that there are two unknown functions in this. One is the field variable u of x, which we want to find. And one is this v of x, which is an arbitrary function. Okay. Well, this is the virtual displacement. Now, to further propagate the uh, idea of uh, using a series solution, let's assume a series form for u and v okay so for u of x let us say u of x is written as n 0 x plus d1 n 1 x plus d2 n 2 of x and so on and so forth so we are writing it in terms of a series of functions d i n i of x where uh, you know d i's are the unknown coefficients and n i are the known functions And this n naught of x is a special function which is only used to ensure that uh, that u of x satisfies the Dirichlet condition 
or the essential boundary condition. Okay. Similarly, let's say we use the same set of known functions for v of x and we find and we define it in terms of c times n where uh, c's are again unknown and n's are known. Okay. So just to reiterate, n i of x are known predefined functions and these are zero wherever essential boundary conditions are specified. Okay. Di are the unknown coefficients which are to be determined. So if we are able to find out Di, we will be able to find out u of x. Ci's are arbitrary coefficients. Okay, recall that v of x is an arbitrary function uh, and now that we have fixed it in terms of n's which are the known functions, the only arbitrariness will come from the coefficients c and n naught of x is a function that satisfies the essential boundary condition on u of x. Okay, so recall that we have said that the n i uh, for i not equal to 0, these are functions which are 0 at EBC locations or essential boundary condition locations. So this ensures that v of x will be 0 at the essential boundary conditions locations which is a requirement which is an admissibility requirement and by adding this function n0 to the expansion of u of x we ensure that the essential boundary conditions are satisfied. Now let us take these and substitute them in the weak form. Okay, so this w, sorry not w, v, this v comma x becomes this expansion, u comma x becomes this expansion okay, and again here this is v and this is v at 1. Okay. Now we can do a lot of manipulation in this. Uh, so one thing which you will notice is that this c is being multiplied to every term. So we can take this uh, summation over j, c j common from everywhere. Okay. And then uh, there is a term which has a second summation so that term we write separately and all the other terms we take on the other side and we say that this is for all j so eventually we reach a form which is uh, k d equals to f okay where k i j is essentially this This is kij. So this has two indices. So this kij is a matrix, and we will realize that this kij is being multiplied to di. So basically, this is k times d. Okay. And this right hand side is f, uh, which has an index on j. Okay. So j is spanning the row numbers, and i is spanning the column numbers. So Kij is a matrix which will be of size n by n where n is the number of functions we have used. Di are the unknown coefficients. This is a vector which is of size n by 1 and Fij is the so called so, sort of force vector in a way which is also a vector. And this is also of size n by 1. Okay. So once we uh, get this here, so we can solve this system and we can get d. And once we get d, we can write u of x as n naught x plus summation di n i x. 